Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to provide you an update as to what's happening in the Russian economy. Now, if you follow the channel, you'll know that the data that's being released by Russia is extremely limited. We don't get all of the data that we see for other countries. So it's quite difficult to be able to get under the skin of what the numbers actually look like. But fortunately, the Ministry of Finance in Russia does release limited information on a monthly basis. The Russian Finance Ministry simply post it onto their website. There's no song and dance, there's no big press release. But I've got the data for August. Now, unfortunately, it is still limited in terms of the level of detail. But we do get a breakdown of oil and gas revenue, non-oil and gas revenue, and we'll talk about that later in the video because that's now becoming a really important part of the Russian finances. We get the data on expenditure, but we don't get a breakdown in terms of how much they're actually investing into the war in Ukraine. So we'll have a look at that. And all of that data enables us to be able to look at what the bottom line is, the net profit, or as we are at the moment, the net deficit that Russia is recording. Now, in previous videos when I've analysed this data, we've had a look at the difference between 2022 and 2023, because generally that's what you do when you're analysing any set of figures. You look at what the movement has been compared to last year. However, 2022 was a really unusual year for Russia. Obviously, that was the year that they decided to invade Ukraine. It started on the 24th of February. And during the course of that year, the sanctions started to have a bigger and bigger impact as more and more countries decided they no longer wanted to buy Russian oil and Russian natural gas. And so Russia had to start selling a lot more of its fossil fuels at a discount to countries like China and India. So a more representative year of what Russia was doing before the war started is 2021. So in today's figures, we're going to compare where we are right now against last year and also the full year for 2021, because that tells us where Russia should have been before all of the impact of their invasion of Ukraine started. So in today's video, I'll have a detailed look at the fall in oil and gas revenue in 2023 compared with 2022 and 2021. We'll then have a look at what's going on with non-oil and gas revenue because there's been a remarkable increase in what's classified as non-oil and gas revenue. So we'll look into how that increase has come about and what this actually relates to. We'll then go through total revenue, expenditure and what the bottom line is for Russia. And then finally, today I'll wrap up with my summary as to what I think the impact of the latest results are on the Russian economy and what the outlook is for the next three to six months. But before we get started on all of that, I've got a question for you. As you know, one of the objectives for this channel is to try and help us all to learn more, educate ourselves. So the question is, where are the Andes? And the answer to that question is on the end of your armies. Because somebody was asking me, have you got any arms? And clearly I have, here they are. But if you would like to know where the Andes are, you can find out at the end of the video. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, me just talking in a bit more relaxed format, face to face, then please check out my Patreon channel, where you'll be able to avoid all of the annoying adverts that are constantly posted on YouTube while you're watching my videos. And also you'll be able to see content that isn't being posted on YouTube, as well as being able to engage me, ask me some questions, and hopefully I'll be able to do a Q&A at some point in the near future. But if you don't like Patreon and you'd still like to support the channel, please have a look in the description below where you'll find the link to buymeacoffee.com, as well as YouTube's Super Thanks and Membership Scheme. Quite often I receive comments in the section below saying, can you please state your sources in terms of where you're getting all of your information from? And the problem with doing that is that I'm looking at so many different sources of information that it would take me a long time to be able to quote them all. So quite often what I try to do is include the source data on the actual chart, but if that is impossible, you just have to work it out for yourself. But in terms of where the official data is coming from for the Russian budget, the Ministry of Finance for the Russian Federation released limited information on a monthly basis. So if you go to minfin.gov.ru forward slash en, if you want to read it in English, forward slash document, it brings you to this page. So if we look at the list of the documents that the Ministry of Finance have published, you can see that there are four documents relating to the monthly information for August. And this is the one that we want, brief monthly information on federal budget execution, because this includes the breakdown of where the revenue is coming from and also goes through to August. So you can see that the data that they're providing goes back to January 2011, which is quite a long way. 
And we've got a detailed breakdown of oil and gas revenues, non-oil and gas revenues, and then a whole lot of other information. And included in here is defense and law and order. But unfortunately, when we scroll over to 2022 and 2023, to the far end of this document, you can see that the breakdown of the expenditure actually disappears. So we don't get that information anymore. So we don't know exactly what Russia is spending on defense. But we've still got the breakdown in terms of oil and gas revenues, non-oil and gas, and all of this other information. Now, this isn't in a particularly user-friendly format. If I was to start talking about these figures now, I don't think that would be particularly interesting. So in order to make the data easier to use, I've copied all of the figures from 2021, 2022, and up to August 2023 into this spreadsheet. And then I've created some rather nice graphs over here. And that's what we're going to talk about because everybody loves a graph. So let's start off by looking at what's going on with oil and gas revenue. Now, before we go on any further today, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Masterworks. Inflation and interest rates are still not resolved and stock investors could see more volatility and stagnancy in the long term. Diversification remains key for investors. And a new independent survey of registered investment advisors, financial advisors, alternative asset managers, and other industry professionals revealed that 88% of financial advisors intend to increase their allocations to alternative asset classes over the next two years. Over half are considering raising their alternative asset allocations to 15%, whilst more than 20% estimate that their alternative asset allocations will exceed 25%. And one alternative that's receiving a lot of attention is fine art. Masterworks recently made headlines after launching a $36 million offering on their platform, its largest acquisition to date. And a few weeks ago, Masterworks exited their 16th investment, which delivered another double-digit net return to everyday investors. And including this most recent sale, Masterworks has now sold over $45 million worth of art and paid the net proceeds out to everyday investors who didn't need millions or an art degree to invest. Now, I'd like to make it clear that I am not providing investment advice and past performance is not an indication of future returns and exited investments are not representative of performance for artworks not yet sold. However, Masterworks now has over 800,000 users and more than $940 million worth of assets under management. Now, I haven't invested or started my portfolio yet. However, the good news if you are interested in investing is that Joe Bloggs subscribers can skip the waitlist and get priority access for Masterworks by clicking the link in the description below. This graph shows the monthly revenue that Russia has earned from the sale of oil and gas for 2021, 2022 and the period up until August 2023. The figures for 2021 are shown by the grey line. The figures for 2022 are shown by the orange line. And the figures for 2023 are shown by the blue line. And just to make things easier to see, I've actually included the data on each of these lines and there's a table at the bottom. And all of the figures here are shown in millions of rubles. So the scale on the left hand side actually goes from zero at the bottom to 30 trillion rubles at the top. Now, when we've talked about these figures before, I've just provided a comparison between what's happening now and what happened in 2022. But I think to put things into more perspective, we really need to see what was happening in 2021, because obviously the figures from 2022 have been heavily influenced by what's happening in Ukraine. So that's not really a representative year. It doesn't tell us in the normal course of events what Russia should have been earning from oil and gas revenues. And before we dive into the detail of what's happening right now, the overriding message that this graph is sending to us is that Russia's revenues have fallen significantly compared to where they were in 2021. The revenue lines on this graph are cumulative, which means that we're adding up all of the different months to get to the year end total. So that's why all three years are showing constant progressive growth. And if you look at the shape of the revenue chart for 2021, it is virtually a straight line at a 45 degree angle, which tells us that there was constant high demand for Russian oil and gas and that Russia was selling, broadly speaking, a similar amount of gas in every single month. Now, if you look at the orange line, which shows the revenue from oil and gas for 2022, you can see that in January and February, the line was running broadly parallel to the line for 2021. However, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, which commenced on the 24th of February 2022, we start to see a divergence. And that divergence gets wider as we move later into 2022, as the sanctions started to kick in and countries stopped buying Russian oil and gas. 
And if you look at the blue line, which shows the revenue for 2023, you can see that the situation has got worse and the revenue that Russia is earning from oil and gas sales is lower than it was in 2022 and significantly lower than where it was in 2021. And if we now look at the latest information provided for August, you can see that in the first eight months of 2023, Russia has earned 4.8 trillion rubles from the sale of oil and gas, which equates to around $31 billion which represents a fall of around $51 billion compared to what Russia earned in the first eight months of 2022 and is $134 billion less than what Russia earned in the first eight months of 2021. And that represents a fall of around 69% in oil and gas revenue as a direct result of Russia's decision to invade Ukraine. And I think that really puts into perspective the problems that the Russian economy is facing right now. Because the grey line on this chart represents where Russia should be, the orange line represents the damage that was caused initially by the invasion of Ukraine, and the blue line represents the ongoing problems that Russia is facing as a result of the sanctions and the scramble to find new buyers for oil and gas. Now this chart shows the official figures for non-oil and gas revenue for 2021 2022 and 2023. And I think this chart and these figures are absolutely fascinating. Let's start off by looking at 2021. Just to remind ourselves, the total revenue that Russia earned in 2021 from oil and gas sales was 25 trillion rubles, which equates to around $265 billion. And the non-oil and gas revenue in 2021 was 9 trillion rubles, which equates to around 9.5 billion dollars. So in 2021, oil and gas revenue equated to around 74% of total revenue. Now, interestingly, as you can see from this chart, non-oil and gas revenue increased significantly in 2022. And the full year figure was 16 trillion rubles, which equates to around $171 billion. So a significant increase. And if we compare that to what happened to oil and gas revenue in 2022, total revenue was 11.5 trillion rubles. So that meant that in 2022, Russia actually earned the majority of its income from non-oil and gas revenue, 57%. However, when you look at the absolute levels, there was an 80% increase in non-oil and gas revenue in 2022. And that's really difficult to be able to explain. And if we now go on to look at what's happening in 2023, you can see that there's been a further increase in non-oil and gas revenues. And the blue line has actually crossed over the orange line. And in the eight months to the end of August, Russia has earned 12 trillion rubles or around $125 billion from non-oil and gas revenue, which is actually an increase of around 30% compared to the full year figure for 2021. And once again, I'm finding it difficult to be able to explain exactly what this non-oil and gas revenue is. Oil and natural gas have been the drivers of the Russian economy for the last 30 years. However, what we're seeing for the first eight months of 2023 is that 70% of Russia's income is now coming from non-oil and gas revenue. And that revenue is continuing to increase year on year. This chart shows the monthly progression of total revenue received by the Russian economy in 2021, 2022 and 2023. And as with the other graphs, 21 shown by the grey line, 22 shown by the orange line and 23 shown by the blue line. So if we start off by looking at the difference between 21 and 22. You can see that in the period between January and April 2022, total revenue was virtually identical to what it was in 2021. However, from May onwards, as the sanctions against Russia started to kick in, you can see that there was a clear divergence and total revenue fell compared to what it was in the previous year. And if we look at the year end figures, total revenue in 2022 was 27.8 trillion rubles, which equates to around 290 billion US dollars. And that figure represented a fall of around 6.5 trillion rubles or 68 billion dollars or around 19% which on the face of it doesn't seem too bad, given the severe sanctions that were applied against Russia. However, I think what's puzzling when you look at the breakdown of total revenue is that oil and gas revenue fell by 54% between 2021 and 2022. However, that fall was offset by a 79% increase in non-oil and gas revenue. And once again, I can't really give you a good explanation as to how that happened because I don't have a breakdown of what non-oil and gas revenue actually equates to. 
And if we now look at the situation for 2023, you can see that the total revenue figures are lower than they were in 2022 and 2021. However, over the course of the last few months, there has been a narrowing of the gap between 23 and 22. And if total revenue carries on at its current trajectory, it's likely to be at least in line with where it was for 2022. And as we discussed in the previous section, the main driver of this has been the rapid increase in non-oil and gas revenue, which now represents around 70% of Russia's total revenue. This chart shows Russia's total expenditure for 2021-2022 and the first eight months of 2023. And what this shows is that Russia's total expenditure, which includes its investment costs into the war in Ukraine, increased significantly in 2022 compared with 2021. And in 2023, we've seen a further increase in those costs as Russia continues to invest heavily into its military conflict. And total expenditure in the first eight months of 2023 has come in at 19.3 trillion rubles, which equates to just over $200 billion, which represents an increase of 21 billion or 12% versus the figure for the first eight months of 2022, and an increase of 50 billion or 32% compared with the first eight months of 2021. This graph shows Russia's bottom line, so basically the end result that you get from deducting all of the expenses from total revenue for 2021, 2022 and 2023. And the scale on this graph is slightly different. On the left hand side, we're still showing the figures in trillions of rubles, but we've got a scale that goes from minus 6 trillion at the bottom to plus 12 trillion at the top. Now, if we start off by looking at the situation for 2021, you can see that the Russian economy was in surplus, so profit for the whole of that year. And Russia appears to have an interesting way of accounting for its expenditure. If you look at the figure for November 2021, Russia posted a profit of 10.7 trillion rubles, which equates to around $112 billion. However, the year-end figure for December 2021 was actually 9.6 trillion rubles. And if we jump back to the expenditure graph, you can see that there was a sharp increase in expenditure in the last month of the year. So this clearly is a way of Russia accounting for all of its expenditure. It must include a catch-all figure at the end of the year to include everything that it's accrued or spent during the course of the year that it hasn't actually been accounting for on a monthly basis. If we now look at the orange line, which represents the figures for 2022, you can see that Russia actually recorded a net profit in every single month through to November when the net profit for the 11 months was recorded at 743 billion rubles, or around $8 billion. However, once again, if we have a look at the graph for expenditure, you can see that there was a sharp increase in December when a charge of around 4.8 trillion rubles, or roughly $50 billion, was passed in the final month of the year. And this resulted in Russia posting a net deficit for 2022 of 3.3 trillion rubles, or around $47 billion. If we now look at the blue line, which shows us the bottom line figures for 2023, you can see that in every single month between January and August 2023, Russia has posted a net deficit. And the current figure for August 23 of 2.4 trillion rubles represents a negative swing of 2.6 trillion rubles, or $28 billion, against the figure posted for 2022 and a swing of 8.9 trillion rubles, or $94 billion, against the figure for the first eight months of 2021. So what this graph shows is that over the course of the last two years, Russia has seen a significant reduction in its net profit. And actually, over the course of the last nine months, Russia has been posting net deficits, so it's been losing money. And that's why it's been having to draw on its national wealth fund to be able to fund these losses. But as we've discussed from looking at the data in these graphs, there is a big question at the moment as to where the huge increase in non-oil and gas revenue is coming from. That's really difficult to explain. And if that increase hadn't been included in these figures, the net deficit would be significantly higher than it's shown on this chart. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video to give you the latest data that's been released officially by the Ministry of Finance in Russia. And what that data shows us is that oil and gas revenues, which are the heartbeat of the Russian economy, are down 38% against where they were this time last year. 
but 69% compared to where the Russian economy was in 2021, before the invasion of Ukraine started. And that equates to a reduction in income of over $134 billion. Billion dollars. This is a huge amount of cash that Russia has lost. And even if we're just comparing the latest results to what happened in 2022, it's a reduction of $51 billion. That is a huge amount of cash. Now, I'm constantly receiving messages in the comments below from people saying that Russia is not encountering any problems. It's actually doing better than it was before the war started. The sanctions haven't had any impact and Russia is going from strength to strength. But these figures, which are the official figures published by the Ministry of Finance, so it's not me guesstimating what's happening to Russia. This is the official data, tells us that Russia has lost over 50 billion in one year and more than 130 billion compared to a normal year. So in anybody's book, that tells us that Russia is doing significantly worse now than it was before it decided to invade Ukraine. Now, in today's video, I've taken the figures provided by the Ministry of Finance at face value. And what those figures show is a huge increase in non-oil and gas revenue, almost offsetting the reduction in oil and gas revenue. Now, as I discussed earlier in the video, I can't give you an explanation as to what that means, what's driving this increase in non-oil and gas revenue. It doesn't really make a lot of sense because there isn't anything obvious that you can attribute this income to. But even if you do give the Russian Ministry of Finance the benefit of doubt on this one, the total revenue earned by the Russian economy in the first eight months of 2023 is down 19% compared to where it was in 2021. So once again, this tells us that the Russian economy is weaker now than it was before it decided to start this war. And in terms of the cost of the war, they are still going up. And total expenditure in the first eight months of this year is up 32% or around $50 billion compared to where it was in 2021. And the bottom line impact of all of those movements is that Russia has now posted a net deficit of 2.4 trillion rubles in the first eight months of 2023, which represents a negative swing compared to where the Russian economy was in 2021 of $93 billion. So the overall summary of the official figures provided by the Ministry of Finance of Russia is that Russia is doing significantly worse today than it was in 2022 and also 2021. So the impact of the sanctions is really hurting the Russian economy. And as we saw from the data, there is usually a large charge that is passed in December of each year. That's happened in 2022 and 2021. So it's likely that the deficit will continue over the course of the next three to six months and that we could see a big spike in expenditure coming through in December 2023 that would result in Russia posting a record net deficit for this financial year. And as we've discussed many times before, the only way that Russia can finance these deficits is by drawing down on its national wealth fund. And that national wealth fund has a finite amount of capital in it. At the start of 2022, it had around $150 billion. In 2022, Russia recorded a loss of around $47 billion. And as we've seen from today's data, in the first eight months of 2023, Russia is running a deficit of around $24 billion, but that's likely to increase. So this situation is starting to put real pressure on the Russian economy. And if the results continue coming in as we're seeing them right now, there is a real chance that at some point over the next 12 to 18 months, Russia could run out of money if it continues with the war in Ukraine. So I'll keep you posted on any more official results that are published by Russia with regards to their economy. Hopefully you found today's episode useful, informative and thought provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And the people who are interested in the answer to the question, where are the Andes? The Andes is a mountain range in South America, which runs for around 5,500 miles and extends from north to south in Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Chile and Argentina. So maybe that's something else that you've learned from today's video, but even if you already knew that, here's something to put a smile on your face.